From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. The bitter cold has reached us in most of Montana. Let's go ahead and check in with Miller on the very latest. Also, what we can expect for temperatures for Christmas. Welcome to the hump. Happy Wednesday, everybody getting closer and closer to the long Christmas weekend. And you know, winter officially starts this afternoon at 248. But it's been winter the last couple of days. Look at these temperatures today. Absolutely brutal. Now these are the actual temperatures that we're projecting today. Not even mentioning what the wind chills could be. We've seen some wind chills along the high line earlier this morning over 55 below zero as that cold Arctic air really digs in today. It will loosen its grip as we head toward the weekend and try to warm back up. But highs today, 21 below in Helena, 19 below in Great Falls, 19 below in Cup Bank, where we did see those 55 plus below temperatures this morning with the wind chill. 11 below in Billings, 11 below in Sheridan as well. There's that Arctic air, but high pressure coming in to dry us out and warm us up. Details coming up. If you have to be outside today, keep in mind the extreme cold can be dangerous. Experts say it only takes minutes to get frostbite or to experience hypothermia, especially on the exposed parts of your body like fingers, ears, or even cheeks. Dressing in layers and wearing winter gear such as hats, gloves, and boots are essential. And paramedics say covering any exposed skin is the best way to prevent frostbite. Numbness, pain, or skin changing to a white or gray color are signs of frostbite. Now we're also learning local hospitals are seeing a rise in patients seeking treatment for being outside in the cold. Officials say they can't keep them if treatment isn't necessary, but social workers will try to find a bed for them somewhere else. Local organizations are doing everything they can to keep people off the streets and out of the cold. The Yellowstone County Continuum of Care is opening an emergency shelter at the First Congregational Church. It is available for up to 31 people every night through April 30th. Of course, the Montana Rescue Mission is an option for folks seeking shelter in Billings. Earlier this week, 100 men and almost 60 women stayed there overnight. In Bozeman, the homeless center is currently in code blue because of the low temperatures. That means the center, which is normally closed during the day, will be open 24-7 until 9 a.m. Saturday. But there is concern about running out of space. The capacity of the center is 110, and it was already housing at 94 people Monday night. When the deadly sub-zero temperatures hit Butte, this icy alleyway may be the only shelter some people can find, and that's a terrifying prospect for people with nowhere to go. Are you worried? Are you scared about the weather? Yes, very terrified, especially with my health issues I have. So I'm scared if I have seizures, a seizure out here. No one's gonna be able to help me, and my wife has seizures too. So we're getting rocked in a hard spot. The Butte Rescue Mission shelter on East Platinum Street will have its emergency shelter open throughout the cold weather, which is expected to drop to 37 below on December 21st. We're dealing with one of the longest nights of the year, and so with that, some cold, hard, hard times, especially for those that don't have shelter, that don't have a place to go. Lloyd and his wife with their two dogs have been panhandling for money at the intersection of Montana and Platinum for the past few days. Sometimes we get a motel for a couple nights. Other times we just sleep in the snow. The shelter has been filled to near capacity since the beginning of November. Shelter officials say they have plenty of blankets, jackets, and warm clothing to give away to anyone who needs them ultimately keep people alive. You know, we're saving lives here, giving out the resources that we have. Police will be looking for anyone stranded out in the cold. Uh, all those folks that uh, are homeless and uh, may not have a place to go, it's, it's critical that they get to a place and uh, make sure that they're safe because, uh, like I said, you can be hypothermic and not even realize it. And, and then, you know, then, it, then things go downhill very quickly. Lloyd hopes he can find a place to go to. I'm trying to get myself, my wife and I, out of the streets as quick as I possibly can. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. 
Happening this week, lawmakers will vote on whether to approve a $1.7 trillion budget bill to fund the government in 2023. We're learning it could have a major impact on disaster relief efforts in Montana. $916 million are set aside for flood relief efforts in Yellowstone National Park. We'll be following the vote in the nation's capital this week. And now to the courtroom where a lame deer pastor is pleading not guilty to felony sexual abuse charges. 66-year-old Dean Smith is accused of raping four females on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, including three girls under the age of 12. Smith is facing life in prison if convicted. New police data is showing a huge increase in vandalism in Billings. Vehicle vandalisms jumped from 423 in 2021 to 487 this year. The rise in home vandalism is even higher, a 25% increase from 199 to 248. Schools were targeted 21 times. Well, a Montana icon is celebrating a birthday this week. 37 years ago, Our Lady of the Rockies began her watch over Butte. Now, if you've been to the mining city, you've seen her perched on the Continental Divide. It took five years and hundreds of volunteers to transport the lady piece by piece to the top of the East Ridge. The last piece of her head, it was flown in by helicopter. The 90-foot statue is the fourth largest in the United States. And that's a look at some of the day's top headlines. The military is struggling to recruit new members. The U.S. Armed Forces fell 25% short of their goal in 2022, so they're turning to a relatively untapped population for help, women. The Army National Guard might not be a high school grad's first choice, but for 18-year-olds Piper Chartier and Mackenzie Ruff, it was the best choice. It gives you such a good future and you meet like such great people. I would go back to basic training and I would do it again. The two Skyview grads completed basic and advanced in the visual training this summer and came back home with some interesting observations. You could definitely hear like the drill sergeants like we're talking about how like there's not as many people coming in. When we had both wars going on, uh, recruiting was not as difficult as it is now. Sergeant First Class Daniel Moosefeld is the station commander for the recruiting battalion here in the Billings area. The recruits he looks for have to be physically, morally, and mentally qualified. With the rise in prescription medication and drug use and uh, physical limitations and disabilities, that'll negate more than half of the people we talked to right off the bat. He says that despite difficulties in recruitment, there has been one surprising change, a 60% female enlistment rate. We're seeing more females joining the National Guard because we are more educationally focused and we're the only outfit that has that tuition waiver. Chartier is following in her sister Skylar's footsteps as soldier, ROTC cadet, and MSU Bobcat. I'm going to Montana State for college here in January, and I'm still going to be in the National Guard. And I'm also doing ROTC. And Skylar's seen firsthand how women are stepping up in the service. In my battalion, there are a higher percentage of female leadership. Which gives these two hope for the future. I think it was one of like the best decisions that I could have made. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News.